Hi, I recently decided to put online several video presentations of my finished cases. My name is Alex and I've been a specialist orthodontist for over 8 years. And today I'm going to start with a very traditionally treated case of a severe dental crowding. In my view, nowadays traditional orthodontic mechanics is not getting as much coverage as it should. Would it be at the conferences, in the journals, online? market is pushing forward a wide variety of novel appliances and techniques and in some instances this is good but also this trend often leads to unnecessary complexity and less predictable outcomes so my point is we should not be forgetting about fundamental orthodontic principles without further ado let's delve straight into the case here is a 12-year-old lady, looking at her face, we see a dolihofacial skeletal pattern. The lower lip is slightly procumbent. Intrurally, she has a severe crowding. Her upper and lower buccal teeth are tilted inwards, which makes her arches look narrower than they really are. And of course, she has this remarkable discoloration of the upper centrals, which we are also going to address later in the treatment. This is her cephalometric image and we clearly see that FMA angle has been increased. This is her panoramic x-ray, nothing really remarkable over here. This is the cephalometric tracing. This is a classic high angle case with FMA angle of 31 degrees. We also can appreciate here quite a severe upper incisor proclamation, which actually is the cause of her protrusive lower lip. And before jumping into the actual treatment, I want to briefly outline two things you have to avoid while treating high angle cases. First, you have to avoid proclining the lower incisors. And secondly, by all means, you have to stay away from extruding the molars, would it be the upper or the lower molars. Because if you allow one of these things to happen during your treatment, you inevitably face the unwanted increase in vertical dimension. So my treatment plan here included the extraction of four first bicuspids. I also started with the upper fixed expander and as I said earlier, I was concerned with the inward tipping of the buccal teeth. So my main goal here with this expander was not to gain uh, much of skeletal expansion, but rather to upright the buccal teeth in the transverse dimension. On the lower jaw, I initially bypassed the lower incisors, not to procline them and not to damage the soft tissues. I started early on in the treatment with the legs bags attached to the lower canines to uh, upright the canines and by doing so to create enough space for the uh, unraveling of the lower crowning. And here you see the working wires in place. Most of the space closure was done on 1925 stainless steel wires in 22 slot. And at this stage, I was running triangular elastics to enhance the overbite and to flatten the lower arch. I avoided any elastics attached to the molars during the whole period of treatment, because if you do so, you are running a risk of extruding the molars and increasing the vertical dimension. And I also want to draw your attention to this very important bands on the closing wires. We call them V-bands and their purpose is to prevent uh, deflection of the wires during the space closure period. So basically we are making these bands in the opposite direction of the anticipated deflection. And this is how the upper closing wire with V-bands looks and this is the lower closing wire with the V-bands. So this is how the teeth looked at the debon stage. You can appreciate a nice intercuspation. We managed to keep the arch forms almost without alteration. And it is actually the key contributory factor for the long-term stability. But there are also two things which I didn't quite like about this teeth. The first thing I already mentioned is the discoloration of the upper centrals. And the second thing is this pesky dark triangle between the lower incisors. The triangle was there because the interdental papilla had receded during the treatment. But from my experience, it recuperates pretty well in this age group quite nicely in about 
two months after the bond. So I waited for about a couple of months and after that I performed micro abrasion and icon infiltration on the upper centrals and also I placed an extended 5 to 5 lower fixed retainer which is actually designed this way to prevent the opening of the extraction space. On top of this uh, fixed retainer I also gave the patient a couple of uh, removable Essex retainers to wear at the night time only. And here you can see the teeth at the debond stage and in about two months after that. You can see that the discoloration has been corrected and the dark triangle now is almost invisible. This is how the smile and the teeth looked in the end of the treatment. This is a panoramic x-ray on which you can appreciate a nice root parallelism. This is a cephalometric image. And for those of you who have a special interest in the TMJ, here you can see both the left and right condyles seated nicely in the glenoid fossae. And this is the final tracings. You can compare initial and final figures and you can clearly tell that we have managed to keep the vertical dimension without changes. We corrected the upper incisor proclination and we also slightly reduced the value of IMPA angle. And this is quite a favorable thing in a high angle case because if you slightly overcorrect IMPA uh, in a high angle case, it will add to your post treatment stability. And here you can see the superimposition of initial and final tracing. You can clearly see that we corrected the lower lip procumbency and the final profile overall looks more harmonious and aesthetically pleasing. So here you can take a closer look uh, at the smile and the teeth. The overall treatment time was 22 months, which included four months of clinic closure caused by the COVID pandemic. And a final thing I want to acknowledge about this case is that the patient was very compliant. She helped me a lot by wearing her elastics properly. So I actually attribute the successful outcome to the enthusiasm of this young lady. I just did a little bit of orthodontics here. And I want to wrap up this case presentation with a quote from Dr. Rolf Behrens, who is the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Orthodontics. And he said that compliance is the single most important factor in treatment success. And from myself, I want to add that the early adolescence period is the best time for comprehensive orthodontic treatment, because the treatment time is generally much shorter the treatment itself is easier and unlike in adult cases where we often have such issues as missing teeth, implants, multiple restorations, etc. In teenage cases we most of the time are working in this nice environment of healthy teeth and correct dental anatomy which of course helps us to get nicer aesthetic results. So if you have a teenage child who needs a treatment please don't think twice schedule an appointment with the orthodontist right now. So this has been a very traditional orthodontic treatment. And also this is the first time I put a video of a case presentation online. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them shortly. If you liked this video, please subscribe wherever you're watching it and also consider following my orthodonticgrammar.com blog. With this being said, I see you in the next one.